Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Very quick check on the markets. The Dow is up about 230 points, S&P 500.9% in the green, and Nasdaq composite 1.20% in the green uh, territory. So as we can see, futures are pointing to a higher opening, continuing the yesterday's surge. Uh, let me show you very quickly also uh, the macro data that we are expecting today. Here it is. Actually, the export price index month on month is uh, higher by 0.5%, a forecast 0.4% percent in previous 0.8 percent um, overall we're also going to see the industrial production at about 9 15 u.s time which is uh, 3 15 uh, p.m italian time so we're going to see the industrial production year on year then um, industrial production month on month uh, so uh, in about a 15 minutes very quick look also at the bond market so far the 10-year treasury is using 0.68 the two-year 0.13 and the 30-year 1.43 uh, european markets are trading Trading mostly higher. The DAX is up about a 0.44 percent. The FTSE 1.20 percent. Actually, one of the best performing European indices. And the FTSE 100 1.30 percent in the green territory. Let me show you very quickly also the commodities. The US oil is trading. $37 per barrel, the brand is $39 per barrel, and the gold $1,968 an ounce. So let me just uh, bring you a major story today. The International Energy Agency cut its forecast for 2020 all demand growth, citing a treacherous path ahead amid weakening market sentiment and an upsurge in the number of coronavirus cases reported across the globe in a closely watched monthly report the iea trimmed its outlook for worldwide all demand growth to 91.7 million barrels per day uh, that marks a contraction of 8.4 million barrels per day year on year more than the uh, 8.1 million barrels per day contraction predicted in the Paris-based Energy Agency's August report. So certainly we're going to win the situation together with Philip Tribal, a senior analyst, Blue Line Futures. Good morning, Phil. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. So I'd like to hear your take on the data and how much of an impact can we imagine in terms of um, crude oil price fluctuations? So it's really interesting because crude oil prices are actually up about 1% this morning, and it largely you know, ignored that news. I think the market was really focused on uh, the China data and China's continuing to improve. You know, I mean, they dropped that forecast by a, about 300,000 barrels, and that's understandable. You've got a rise in COVID cases. You also have globally, you've got weaker economic data. You do have a lot of shelter in place. Certain, there's about 14 states. Um, if you travel to in the United States, you'd have to maintain uh, a two week quarantine. So that's going to curb that driving demand. But we do have a hurricane also that's coming through, Hurricane Sally. So that might uh, impact some of the supply that's out there. Also, you see a pickup in gasoline demand when it comes from the generator use. So I think crude oil prices, they broke down to a level. They're kind of holding support. The weaker dollar is also helping support it as well. So uh, if I have a look at the futures, I'm talking about a U.S. stock futures, I do see um, certainly an indication for a um, higher opening. Uh, do you believe that we are done with the downward trend? Are we at the very beginning of a bull market? Yeah, we had a really healthy correction at 10% decline um, in the S&P 500 and in the NASDAQ. You know, it was a bit of a washout. What's really interesting is that the, there was news that a vaccine was going to make its way, you know, the Russian vaccine. That marked a top in the market. And then when they said that the vaccine was on hold because they didn't like the way the trials were going, that marked the bottom. And what I think is going on is that you have these pandemic-proof NASDAQ technology stocks. You've got like your Netflix, your Peloton, things like that. When people hear the word vaccine, they sell those products. And then what they do is they start to buy values. So you see NASDAQ go down. You see the Dow Jones and the Russell go up on that news. I think it's a, it's a false play. I don't endorse that type of play. But that's what we're seeing what's happening is this rotation between assets. Uh, right. Um, let me just get back very quickly um, to the crude oil. We've heard several analysts predicting at least 10% decline of the crude oil price um, once again. Do you agree with that kind of predictions or you yeah. think uh, the worst is gone? So I think that oil, I, I was I was a person that, you know, it stopped at 40 and had a false breakout one or two times of the upside. You know, it, if it can't go up, it's probably going to come back down. And like I said, you don't see that big demand out there. We don't see a resurgence in demand. Um, airlines, cruise ships, things like that, you know, freight, trucking. It's not a big demand picture. So 
the fact that any kind of weakness economically, and then also, you know, Saudi Arabia cutting those prices, trying to uh, maintain market share to China, which has filled up many of their supplies. So I think crude oil prices had the correction down. I think 35 to 40 is a good range for crude oil right now. Uh, in terms of other uh, commodities, what are you looking at? Certainly, um, the gold and, um, and you know the the other the silver prices, the silver surge are very very interesting. The fluctuations over there. What are you looking at? So, I mean, gold is obviously a currency, so it is breaking out back to the upside. It's attempting to. If you look at the chart technically, you could pull up a real nice chart where the market had its peak and it's been coming down and it's forming this triangular wedge pattern. We're coming to the end of it. I think we'll break out to the upside. We've got a two-day Fed meeting. They're going to reaffirm quantitative easing. They're also going to talk about you know, um, having an average inflation rate of over 2% before they do any kind of action. I think they want that inflation. So I think the path of least resistance for gold to the upside. Silver will track it because of the fact that it's a blended asset as a commodity and also a currency. So um, any kind of snapback industrial production, you're seeing silver prices rise. So um, how important is the Fed meeting uh, for, for the commodities in your opinion? Well, I think that they're the leader on any kind of stimulus. They've taken the most aggressive measures out of any central bank out there. I was slightly disappointed in the ECB's meeting. They didn't provide that additional stimulus. I thought we would have saw a more dovish play out of the ECB. So that held the euro currency firm. The dollar index should continue to weaken now. That's going to boost most most commodity asset classes in U.S. dollar terms. So like any of the grains, the the livestock, that's why the energy markets are holding those, you know, they should be a lot lower, but they're gonna hold these levels. And then you're seeing all the base metals and precious metals all hold pretty firm. Uh, Phil, I was wondering, I just wanted to hear your view. Um, we've heard from BP, the British Petroleum, uh, which actually said that um, the end of the petroleum um, is nearing, which is certainly quite a statement because it's a major company. We would rather hear that kind of stuff uh, from ambientalists rather than uh, BP. So I was wondering, do you agree with that statement? Well, I mean, you know, BP, they're, they're a fairly powerful company. Their statements, you know, are quite relevant. Um, I think they're maybe showing their hand a little bit. You know, hey, you got to look at how these companies are set up and the, you know, the debt loads that they take on. The hedging structures that they put in place so you know i haven't been that big of a fan of the energy companies lately i think that you can get all these um you know at lower levels at the moment all right thank you very much philip schreibel senior analyst blue line futures thank you so much for joining us and thank you for your analysis yeah thanks for having me have a great week